Hello and welcome to uh, today's two-minute training. Today we're going to be talking about the Indiana Residential Sales Disclosure. All right, this sales disclosure applies to the sale, the exchange, uh, a land contract, or a lease with option of any residential real estate with four or fewer units, okay? So obviously commercial property is not required to have a residential sales disclosure. Now the seller is the one that must complete the form, not you as the agent. And the seller completes the form based upon all of the known defects that he has, um, obviously, or things he should know. Now, it is not a substitution for a home inspection, all right? So if you're on the buyer side, understand that when you get one of these, uh, it doesn't represent or should not take the place of uh, a home inspection. <clears throat> the buyer has to receive a copy prior to the acceptance of their offer, okay? So the buyer has to have it and see it before he makes the offer. Now, the appraiser also is going to get a copy of this as well. The buyer will sign the disclosure when the offer is made, and then the seller will sign it again at the closing table to show that nothing has changed from the original sales disclosure. Now, here's the problem. The owner's not liable for any inaccurate information provided by any third party. So if a roofer tells him the roof's good, then he's not liable for that. He's also not liable for anything that is discovered by the buyers after the sale has closed in which the seller was unaware. Now, there's the key. The seller truly has to be unaware of any of the defects. Now, if the seller was aware and didn't disclose it, that's a whole other issue. The problem is, is how are you going to prove that the seller was unaware? <clears throat> the seller is required to correct anything that they find out is not right. Now, here's the big key, and this is where it's been in the news lately. If the seller gives a uh, residential sales disclosure to a buyer and the buyer makes an offer and then the seller changes the seller's disclosure and say he finds out something, he can change that. But if he does, the buyer has two business days from the receipt of the new or the amended disclosure to actually nullify the deal. And if he does nullify the deal, he gets his earnest money back right away. There's no question because the property of the house changed, okay? Now, I want you to be aware there are some exemptions to the sales disclosure, and people get these confused all the time. So any court order transfers, all right? Anytime the court orders a transfer through specific performance, a divorce, imminent domain, bankruptcy, then there's no sales disclosure required. If it's a foreclosure, there is no, if the mortgagee is foreclosed and the bank takes it, that is where there's no disclosure. If there is an estate, then there is no disclosure, all right? Um, if there's a transfer between co-owners, like business partners, there's no disclosure. If there's a transfer to an individual in what's called consanguinity, which is the line of descent, uh, this is the one that most people are familiar about because it's between the husband and the wife when they get divorced. Um, there's no transfer form if they are if the house is taken through a tax sale and then the last one obviously is there's no residential sales disclosure from the initial builder to the very first occupant that's when they use the uh, uh yeah the other form that the builder signs out uh for that so Basically, you can see that if it's the true owner not selling the property, like bankruptcies 
or foreclosures or tax sales or sheriff sales. Those aren't required. If it's transferred between co-owners or between family members, and then the first one uh, from the new home seller is called the certificate of occupancy. All right, that's been today's uh, two minute training and I hope you uh, enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this, feel free to give me a call.